Jeff here from Chefree's Kitchen and Catering, and today we are going to be doing the Spice Take and Make program featuring a very special dish of mine, which is a lamb ragu pasta. Uh, your spice kits will be available at your nearest Brampton Public Library branch, so pick them up, follow along with this recipe. Let's get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna get our pan on to medium high heat. And while that's heating, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our spices all together. So for the spice mix program, uh, what we have today is we have black pepper, coriander, sumac, which has a very bright lemony kind of taste, chili powder, cinnamon, and finally we got some ground coriander. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mix this up very nicely. I'm gonna set that off to the side. So today we're gonna be using lamb shoulder. The shoulder is kind of a, a tougher cut of meat. It has a lot of uh, intramuscular fat. So it's gonna take a little while to break down. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be braising this over about an hour to two hours, depending on the size. Uh, we have about a, a pound and a half here of lamb shoulder meat with a couple pieces of bone in, which we're gonna leave in while we cook it to develop the flavor. At the end, we're gonna take it out and then we're gonna shred it. So the first thing we wanna do we just want to give this a nice little bit of coating with some canola oil or vegetable oil. We're going to take the mixture and we're just going to season liberally. You want this to be almost like a dry rub. Pat that down nice into the meat. Flip it over. Then we're going to do the same thing. What we want to make sure we do though is we're going to leave about a tablespoon of this rub because we're gonna incorporate that into the actual sauce itself. Once that's in, give your hands a quick wash. Once the pan gets heated, we're gonna add the oil. This part is super important. You wanna get this pan nice and ripping hot. Add your oil, it's about a tablespoon of oil. Once that starts to smoke, we're gonna add the meat in. Okay, so now that the pan is starting to smoke, we got our lamb shoulder here. We're just gonna give this a really, really nice sear. Always lay away from you when you're dealing with a hot pan. That will avoid having any kind of splashback. You can start to hear that sizzle. Now this is gonna take roughly about two, maybe three minutes aside. Doesn't take as long as you might think. It'll brown pretty quickly. So it's been about two, three minutes. We're gonna check the other side. They're starting to look pretty good. So we're gonna give these a nice flip. <coughs> He's got a really nice crust. Oh, whew. spice is potent. <clears throat> so again, this will take about two minutes. So this dish has a lot of Moroccan inspired flavors. Lamb is a pretty prominent ingredient uh, in Moroccan cooking, uh, as well as the spices that we're using today. There's a lot of very earthy, uh, pungent spices. In terms of heat, we're not going too crazy. Moroccan food, you won't find a lot of heat that will you know, destroy your tongue, but more of the heat that will attack your palate in a very high flavorable way. So after this is ready, we're gonna remove this from the heat and we're gonna to start to build our sauce. This sauce is going to be a tomato-based sauce that we're then gonna braise the lamb in. The tomato sauce that I have here is just simply canned tomatoes, about 28 ounces worth, and all I did was I took one onion, three cloves of garlic, and half of a shredded carrot, and I sauteed them in a little bit of olive oil, sweated that down until translucent, didn't wanna get any color in it, and then I added the tomatoes. Once that was all incorporated, I just put it back into a bowl. I let it cool. There was no need to simmer the sauce since we're going to be braising it in the oven. So now that this lamb is done, we're going to check it. This looks perfect. So we're going to remove this from the heat. We're going to turn this down. And the next thing we're going to do 
is we're going to take a tablespoon of tomato paste. And what we want to do is we want to work this in. Tomato paste can have a bitter flavor if you add it raw. So what you want to do is you want to cook it out for just about a minute. Really get those flavors developed. And what's going to happen is you're going to notice that the tomato paste starts to actually turn a much darker red than when you put it into the pan. Once it gets to more of like that dark ruby red, that's when you know you're ready to move on to the next step. So that's good to go. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our red wine. This is about four ounces of red wine. You can use whatever you have available. You don't have to use anything expensive. Just make sure it tastes good. Like I always say, if you can drink it, you can use it. So that's going to go in. We're going to turn our heat back up. And we're kind of just going to deglaze the pan. And what this is going to do, it's going to remove the stuff that's on the bottom of the pan from when we crust the lamb. This is known as fawn. Fawn is that crispy brown goodness that sits at the bottom of the pan after you brown something. By taking a liquid and putting it into the pan, you're going to remove all of that. All of that is flavor. You don't want to wash that out. What we do want to do, though, is we want to cook out the alcohol in the wine. So we're just going to reduce this by about half. And as you can see here, that fawn has been lifted and it's starting to thicken that sauce mixture. It's looking perfect. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our lamb. We're actually going to add it straight back in. Next thing we're going to do, right here, this is a lamb stock that I made previously. If you don't have lamb stock, you can use any stock that you want. You can use chicken stock, you can use vegetable stock, you can use store-bought. Uh, I prefer usually to make my own. I usually just grab uh, bones from my local butcher shop uh, and I put it into a pot with some water and I just cook it down. Uh, so after it's been reduced, this is what you're left with. So we're going to take this, just going to add it straight into the pan. Perfect. Next thing I have here, this is Calabrian chilies. A little bit unusual to use maybe in Moroccan cooking. This is something that you might find more in uh, Italy. Um, these will provide a, a little bit of heat, not too much. But what I'm looking for is the actual flavor of these chilies. So we're going to put those straight in. I have two bay leaves here that we're also going to add. And then finally, the tomato sauce that we previously made. I'm just going to put that straight in. Perfect. Now we're going to turn this back on high. We're going to let this come up to a boil. We're going to reduce it down to a simmer. We're going to place it in the oven. I have the oven preheat at 350. We're going to put that in. We're going to check it after an hour. Like I said before, depending on the cut and the size of the lamb that you have, it could take anywhere from one hour to two hours. So just check it after about 45 minutes. Okay, so we got the mixture that's been brought up to a boil now. What we want to do, this is the leftover seasoning mix that we made earlier. Just going to add a little bit right into it. Kind of give that a little bit of a mix. This color is so nice. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm going to give this a quick taste before we put it into the oven. Make sure our seasoning is where we want it right now. We don't want it to be overly salty because remember, this is going to be reduced. Ho, 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 ho. That's delicious. All right. So this is ready to go. We're going to put this into the oven. We're going to check it in about an hour and see where we're at. Straight over here. All right, everyone, so it's been about an hour. We're going to go and check on our lamb and see if it's done. Remember, this has been at 350 for the past 60 minutes. 
So I'm just going to take my tongs and I'm just going to simply feel for it. What I'm looking for is a simple pull of the meat uh, and a release from the bone. So right here, I'm seeing now that the bone is already starting to pull, pull apart from the actual meat. This tells me that it's done. It's ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this lamb. We're going to take it. We're going to put it onto a tray. We're just going to let it cool because what we want to do is we want to shred it. We're not going to be doing any kind of uh, cutting with the knife. You can simply shred it by hand. If you want to cut it by knife, you're more than welcome to. Um, but this meat is pretty tender where it should simply just kind of fall off. And all we want to do is remove the bones. Now with this, it is a ragu. Traditionally, there's not really um, sort of a definition on how coarse or, or how big you want the, the pieces of meat to be. It's really up to your discretion. I like to have mine in... Uh, pretty much bite-sized pieces where you can actually get it onto a fork. We're also going to remove the bay leaves from here. The bay leaves that I put in, you can't digest them. They will cut up your throat if you try to eat them whole. So I advise to take them out. You want to be very careful with those. This sauce is smelling very, very good right now. We're going to let this hang out. While that's happening, I have the pasta water on. This is going to come up to a boil. I'm going to add a liberal amount of salt. You want it to almost be like the ocean, that saltiness. Uh, we're going to cook the pasta until it's just al dente, and then we're going to bring everything together. All right, so the meat is cooled just enough where I was able to tear it apart. I use scissors just because it's easier to control. This is the kind of size that I like. Uh, you're looking for sizes like that. That's my preference. Again, you're more than welcome to shred it apart completely. I like having these bite-sized pieces. It kind of plays a little bit with the texture. Also, it's very easy to use with a fork. Um, so what we have here is all the meat. We're going to put it straight into that reduced pasta sauce. Get all that in there. Going to use a spatula. We don't want to leave anything on the tray. It's all flavor. Stir it around, give that a nice mix. I still have the gas off right now. This is still very, very hot as it just came out of the oven. So this is just going to continue to heat up as it goes. doesn't need to reduce anymore. So while that's working, I have the pasta here. This water is boiling. We're going to add a generous amount of salt. So the pasta that we're going to be using today, this is Campanelli pasta. This pasta is fresh. It was made yesterday uh, by a good friend of mine in Hamilton who owns Pasta Mercado. You're welcome to use any kind of pasta that you have on hand. Dry pasta will work just as beautifully. I like using the smaller, no uh, smaller noodles for this type of sauce just because it plays a little bit more with the texture. And this Campanelli pasta, if you look at it, the way that it's shaped will actually hold on to the sauce very well, making it kind of go throughout every single bite. Uh, that's why I choose to use it, but again, whatever pasta you have on hand, perfectly fine. So we're going to put this in. Now, I will follow the pasta box directions whenever I am making pasta. Because this is fresh pasta, this is only going to take about three to four minutes to cook. Let me get this lid back on. We're going to let that go. All right, so our pasta is going. Now that this is back up to a boil, we're going to take this lid off. For the garnish, what we have here, this is a lebna. So this is a traditional uh, kind of Middle Eastern condiment. Um, it's very commonly used in Moroccan cuisine. All this is is strained yogurt. So if you take Greek yogurt, you put it into a fine mesh strainer, cover it, let it sit overnight. All of the liquid is going to fall out and you're going to be left with just the solids. And what I've taken here, you can see the consistency of how thick this is. All I've done is I've seasoned it with a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, whisk that together to kind of aerate a little bit. And we're going to use that as the actual topping. This is going to act kind of like a coolant for on top of the pasta. So once you mix it all together, it'll kind of tone down that spiciness. We also have a little bit of lemon juice to cut all the richness of the dish, provide a lot of acidity. We have some breadcrumbs. So all I've done is I've taken the breadcrumbs that I had on hand, uh, I just toasted them in a pan with a little bit of olive oil just till they're nice and golden brown. And then we just have some flat leaf prop, uh, parsley to garnish. So we're going to double check our pasta here. 
This still has about another 30 seconds. Remember, once you take the pasta out and you put it into the sauce, it is going to continue to cook. So now that that's going, we are going to turn this back on the gas. Kind of turn this down into a low. Now, anytime you are making pasta and you have a, a sort of thick sauce, I always like to reserve a little bit of the pasta water. The starchiness from the pasta, uh, the water itself is going to act kind of um, more of like as a, as a thinning agent. So if you do need to adjust the consistency of your sauce, if your sauce may be reduced a little bit too much, or you want it to be a little bit runnier, I always will keep a little bit on hand because that will emulsify into the sauce. It won't destroy any of the flavor that you made. It'll just change the consistency. So right now I'm just going to take a little bit of that. It's going to save it. So this pasta is looking like it's about ready. So we're going to take this. I'm just going to put it all straight in. Now this is 300 grams of pasta. Okay, so the pasta has been added. It's going to give this a quick toss. I always like to take my pasta out about 30 seconds to a minute before it's done cooking. That way I can finish cooking into the sauce and it's going to allow the sauce to really, really cling into that pasta. This color is looking absolutely fantastic. Now again, this would be the part where I would kind of look at it and I would see if it needed a little bit of pasta water to thin it out or, or not. I'm actually pretty happy with this consistency, so I'm not actually gonna add it. All right, so this is done. So all the gas is off. We're gonna be ready to plate. All right, so pasta is done. We're ready to plate. So I'm gonna do this very simply. It's gonna take some, pour it straight into the middle of my plate. Now, this is the Lebna that we have. Again, I'm just gonna take a little dollop right here. I'm just gonna put it straight on top, just like that. Toasted breadcrumbs here. Just give it a little tap. It's going to provide a nice texture contrast. A little bit of lemon juice, just to kind of help with the acidity. That little bit of parsley. Like that. Finally, to finish, just a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin. And we are done. All right, guys. So remember, make sure... Collect the spike kits from your local Brampton Public Library, create the recipe, submit your photos, and the winner will get a $150 cookbook. Please enjoy.